Greetings, and welcome to another thrilling episode of Veronica Explains. I'm Veronica, and today I'd like to do an off-the-cuff episode about how I got started with Linux, and I want to explore the very first distro I ever tried, which I believe was Ubuntu Warty Warthog. I should mention really quick, as I said, this is an off-the-cuff episode, which in my language means I didn't script it beforehand. <laughs> And the reason I haven't scripted this episode beforehand is because I've been very busy. I've been working on getting a virtualization server set up for my next big video that I'm planning, virtualization, QEMU, KVM, and networking, which is going to be a very exciting episode. At least I think it's exciting. I've also been very hard at work on getting a web store set up for the channel. If I have the website done by the time this video goes live, I'll put the link here. And if I don't have the website done, <laughs> that'll be really funny. Okay. I shouldn't start everything with okay. I got started with Linux back in 2005. At the time, I was really into this little social network that was popular with kids my age called MySpace. And there was some sort of plugin, and I don't remember the specific details, that let me reply with canned replies to people's messages. It only worked on this browser called Firefox. I don't know if you've heard of it. I downloaded it on my computer at the time, which was some sort of old e-machines. I, I don't even remember what the thing broke. And I, I got Firefox set up and it, it was kind of amazing. I expected it to go a little bit better than my experience with the Internet Explorer at the time because I'd been a Netscape person, um, as, as a lot of us were. Which was the style at the time? Suddenly, I found myself enthralled with this browser that had this free and open source license, which was something I wasn't sure what that meant, but I knew I wanted to know more. So I started looking into it and I started digging into it and I discovered there are people who make entire operating systems with a free and open source license. The first one that I saw was called Linux. Um, and the most popular Linux at the time that everybody was talking about was called Ubuntu. And I didn't know anything about it, but it was really exciting. So I downloaded it, I burned it to a CD, which was a thing we did at the time. I got it all set, I think I light-scribed the CD too with the Ubuntu logo because I was a nerd. I got it all set up, and the thing was amazing. I absolutely fell in love with Linux at that point. It was that classic GNOME desktop. I think there was brown everywhere, and I I just loved it. And I ordered stickers, and I, I just fell for Linux, and I really never looked back. Then, around 2007, I bought a Mac. This Mac, to be specific, this is a 2007 MacBook, not the Pro, just the MacBook. And this was my go-to computer, and I loved it. I mean, the thing felt hefty, had an amazing keyboard, all the I.O. you could imagine at the time. These things, these early Intel Macs, you could install Linux on it with relative ease, and that's exactly what I did. I ran this Intel Mac with Ubuntu on it for, geez, through the Unity years. I think I was still using that Mac in 2014, 2015. I mean, that's a pretty good lifespan. It's eight years. And I ended up replacing it with an HP, which, you know, I promptly installed Ubuntu on, or Arch, um, one of the two. If you want to see another video where I do something cool with this MacBook, leave a comment. But for now, let's check out Warty Warthog and see how it looks today. So to get started with Warty Warthog, you have to first find Warty Warthog. Easy place to find that is old-releases.ubuntu.com. And let's go ahead and download it. And then we're going to MD5 some that Warty Warthog ISO. Now I am doing the i386 because that's what I used on my first computer. And I see it ends in 85EO. Let's just compare that. 
Okay, well, let's compare these MD5 sums. It looks good. Always check your MD5 sums, kids, or SHA sums now. So here I am in Virtual Machine Manager, or Vert Manager for short. If you want to know more about Vert Manager, I did a video and I'll put a card wherever cards go. So Vert Manager is a fantastic graphical tool that you can use to manage your virtual machines. In this case, I'm going to start up a new virtual machine, and I know it's local install because I already downloaded it. We're going to browse to the Downloads folder, which I have right here. And we're going to choose that volume. It automatically picked that it's Ubuntu 4.10, which is nice. Uh, let's give it a little bit more. Let's give it 2048. That's probably close to what I had when I maxed out that e-machines. That's fine. I have a feeling I'm going to want to customize this to make it a 32 bit. So let's do that before we actually install CPU. We do not want to copy the host. Give me a 32. That should be fine. Okay, and then let's begin the installation. Let's see if that worked. <laughs> I love it. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can change the settings in OBS. So give me just one second. All right, so now hopefully that's recording correctly. Let's go ahead and press enter. Let's try booting it. <laughs> Look at this. This is beautiful. I remember this. See, you'd think this looks bad as an installer, like, oh, look at how old this looks. But you got to remember at the time, I think Windows XP installed much the same way. United States is me, American English. This is going much faster than mine did back then. I think Ubuntu is a fine name. Yep, just do the entire disk. <laughs> it didn't ask me a lot of questions. It's kind of nice. Jeez, this is fast. Oh, first stage of the installation is complete. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Okay, I'm gonna have to remove the installation media. We'll see. Normally, I would have done that with a CD. <laughs> Kernel 2.6.8. I love this. Welcome to your new Ubuntu system. This program will now walk you through the process of setting up your newly installed system. Select my time zone. I'm going to say central because it's true. Enter full name. Veronica. Do I want to download software from the internet? Let's do it. Let's see if it breaks. It's going kind of slow. Okay, for the X window system. <sighs> yeah, Vase is probably fine. I mean, so far it looks really good. I often, when I'm installing Ubuntu, it's the Ubuntu server installer. And this isn't much different. It has fewer options, but it isn't much of a different situation than it used to be. You know what? I should go grab my bop it. Obligatory bop it time. Twist it. Twist it. Twenty by fourteen forty is a strange choice. I don't want to do that. You know what? Let's stick with ten twenty four by seven sixty eight because that's definitely what I was using back then. Bop it! Bop it! Pull it! Twist it! Ooh, it's done. Twist it! Just a little bit of bop it time. Don't mind me. Okay, it says I may now log in. <laughs> Ooh, see if it works. <laughs> oh, I missed this. Okay, let's see if I can resize the display real quick. It's Ubuntu, warty warthog. I think this is 4.10. Yep, it's 4.10. Ah! wonder if the sound will work. 
It's so brown. I love how brown it is. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, oh my goodness. I love it so much. Okay. I have a soft spot for Gnome too. I'm not going to lie. I did a video where I talked about Ubuntu Mate. It was a live video. It's fun. Cards. I I just, I love this layout. You know, honestly, if, if somebody figured out a way to work tiling into Mate, I might never leave. Okay, we've now installed Ubuntu Warty Warthog, but what can we do with it? Let's take a look. We've got some applications, including an archive manager. It's useful. Character map. I wonder what fonts this thing shipped with. This ships with a good amount of fonts. I remember being really confused because I didn't see Arial. I remember wondering, how will websites work if it doesn't have Arial and Times? And, you know, obviously websites worked. Okay, games. It's got Solitaire, Atax, Blackjack. Five or more, four in a row, free cell, Gnometrics? It's the Tetris clone. Ah! This is much snappier than it was on my computer. There's no audio though. I wonder if I can get sound working. Let's see. I remember it had a, a reasonable nibbles. Okay, we got to figure out the sound. Nope, it's not happy with me. Okay, I think I need to figure out the sound in the virtual machine. So, did it have a sound device? I'd like to be able to hear some of these sweet desktop sounds. Oh geez, I just saw a thing about run levels and had a flashback. I should have done a full and complete shutdown. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Sound maybe? That was sound. Okay, I think we're in business. I'm gonna turn it up. Got these sounds. That wasn't expected. Um, what happened? That was weird. Yeah, let's try opening up nibbles again. Enable sounds, there we go. Doesn't look like it worked. I mean, hardware was a, it wasn't as easy as it is now. Let's see how the internet's working. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Ubuntu Linux 4.10, the Warty Warthog release. Ubuntu will always be free of charge, and there is no extra fee for the Enterprise Edition. It's like a dig at somebody. Huh. Firefox and UbuntuLinux.org cannot communicate securely because they have no common encryption algorithms. I have a feeling we're going to run into SSL issues. Why select all Alt-A? I don't think it was like that before. If it was, I found a way to fix it. I'm guessing this does not work. Nope. We're gonna run into that SSL issue. I am reasonably certain modern web is not gonna function. Not at least without some extra work that I don't wanna do right now because I just don't. <laughs> it comes with a floppy formatter. <sighs> Would you look at all this brown? Let's see, what other game was there? It's got Isle Rot. Isle Rot hasn't changed hardly at all. Ooh, it's exciting. Themes, let's see what themes we had available. There was the human theme, which I like. Still think this is pretty. This was apparently the GNOME default theme. You know, change is pretty snappy. I don't remember it changing this quick. This theme does not suggest any particular font or background. It's nice of them. Let's look at evolution. I mean, evolution's not gonna do anything, but. Let's see if it lets me do this. Server type none. Ah! You know, evolution hasn't changed much. 
this is still pretty much what it looks like, which is good. I mean, you want that uh, consistency in something like email. I mean, Outlook, if you think about how Outlook has changed since 2004, Evolution stayed pretty consistent, which is nice. Leave a comment if you want me to do a video on Evolution, because it's definitely one of my favorite Linux email clients. Let's see, what version? Of, oops, it's 2.0. Oh, this was before they had single window mode. Oh boy. Um, you got the multiple windows. Oop, <laughs> the text editor pops out. Okay. And now here's where you change it. Yeah, this isn't a lot of room. GIMP has come a long way since then. Oh, I, I grabbed the wrong layer. It's had a feature for Palm OS devices. I never had a Palm Pilot back then. I wonder how that turned out. You know, what I used to use was Rockbox on my iPod, which was extremely helpful. Ooh, Synaptic. Email. There was Thunderbird. That was an option. Maybe I have to... Let's see if I can pull up a terminal. Oh, I can't pull it up that way. I'm used to Pop OS with the fancy Super T to open up the terminal. All right, let's dig into a terminal. Ah, it's very bright. Okay, sudo apt something. It didn't have apt, it was apt get. Shoot. Nope. Yeah, I wonder if they've taken the old repos offline. We've got to talk about Open Office. I used OpenOffice.org for everything in college. I used it for papers. I used it for budgeting. I used it for charts and graphs and databases and pretty much anything you could use Microsoft Office for. I did it in LibreOffice. This was, for the most part, in the days before Google Docs. So this is what we had, and honestly, it was pretty sweet. I still use LibreOffice today, and I try to stay away from Google Docs whenever possible because that's just who I am as a person. Oh, this takes me back. It very much reminds me of Microsoft Works, which was the text editor I used on my Aptiva growing up. Let's make this a header. Oh, that's not an option. Let's make it really big. Oh, Palatino. This is so nerdy. You know, one thing I don't miss is that I don't have to do anything with NDIS wrapper. Um, <laughs> I remember getting so lost on NDIS wrapper with my MacBook. Um, there was some kind of issue with the Wi-Fi driver working correctly, which as a college student was kind of a big deal. Getting NDIS wrapper going on my MacBook was a challenge. I did it and it worked once I got it working. But holy cow, was that ever just a nightmare. And I'm so glad we don't have to deal with that anymore in Linux. Well, one thing I think we're seeing is, you know, there's honestly just not much you can do with Ubuntu Warty anymore. But it was all there. And honestly, Linux has only grown since 2004, 2005. It's only gotten better. What used to be a really manual process of editing and manipulation and tweaking things has just become so much easier to work with. If you think about how different it is from then versus now in terms of how we get software. Before, we had tools like Synaptic, which I like. I like this tool, don't get me wrong, but it's not exactly the most user-friendly thing in the world, is it? It's no Pop Shop. It's no GNOME Software Center. It's no Plasma Discover. This was what we had, or it was the command line, and we took it. It was fine, but it's so much better now. Yeah, if this is your opinion on what Linux looks like, you need to check out a more modern distro. You know, it's funny. I started this video thinking I was going to look back on this and say, it hasn't changed much. But, you know, honestly, it really has. It was good. But honestly, Linux has gotten so much better. That's, that's what I'm seeing here as I'm, as I'm playing with this for the first time in years. There was just so much that used to be difficult about working with a system like this. Um, 
the package manager, which I've already talked about. You know, beyond that, just setting up devices and 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 working with drivers and figuring out stuff. I mean, it's it's it has honestly become so much better than it used to be. I think this is one of the best things about Linux is that, you know, as I'm kind of reminded here, Linux has been good for a really long time, but it's only getting better as we go. Our games have gotten better that are shipped with it. Our graphics software can do so much more than it used to. Our desktop publishing tools are so much more thorough than they used to be back in 2004, 2005. We have gotten so much better at communicating with end users about making the Linux desktop discoverable and easy to use. And that's incredible. It just really is how much progress we've made since then. I'm, I love seeing this, but to be honest, I love seeing what we've done since a lot more. You know, what I'm struck with is that since 2005, Linux on the desktop has gotten so much better than it used to be. And I don't know why that would surprise me. I mean, Linux is awesome, and so are you. Hi again, all. I'd like to thank our sponsor, you. I'm not a big enough channel to be sponsored yet, but I'm thrilled to have the support of so many of you on Patreon. If you'd like to help me make more nerdy content, you can join up at patreon.com slash Veronica Explains. I am so grateful to you for watching this episode, and if you have any ideas for topics you'd like me to cover in a future episode, please leave me a comment. Thank you so much.